so when people say that why are people not coming to indian football because who the hell wants to watch indian football when you've got a world class product like the premier league or the bundesliga right next to it the leadership doesn't know a uh, football or doesn't even you know is fit enough to lead you know a, a village club therefore to leading a, a country like india you're looking at 121 countries which are above you look at the 104 countries below you they are working harder than you to get above you players do not want to go abroad i have tried to take indian players abroad the last player was 5 years ago chante viking stavanger in norway offered him a, a very very good contract he got offered by chennai at the time five times the money so you mean to say your juniors suck but somehow your seniors will get a magic pill and they'll start kicking everybody's ass why do you say that aiff is the servant of fsdl reliance whatever money indian football may take kushal das was getting a salary of 4 lakhs a month sorry saji don't take it personally saji came here as a secretary he said his salary became 12 lakhs per month what india achieved world cup our government used to give us support of over 60 to 70 crore rupees 5 years ago even kalyan chobe is a politician so why can't he through his political connections reach out to the government because that is more easier than we actually creating a noise this you should invite kalyan chobe onto the show and ask there there could be a kid somewhere in nagpur or could be somewhere in gujarat who could be exceptional how do we find him where is the system still there has been no scouting done odisha government has given you a beautiful world class facility everything is ready to mujhe bol dete main apne bachche bhej deta bhai baba oh fifa secretary said one time fifa president said we are sleeping giant that president went permanently sleep because today there are people who are hiding uh, behind things Uh, without uh, no responsibility no accountability but they are in the uh, in the sea football aaj koi dekhta hi nahi hai even in my childhood days ishwar mohan bagan ka matlab aadmi pagal ho jata hai aaj to sala puchta bhi nahi hai okay so welcome to the third discussion of the chakte football show after having two successful discussions we are finally here with the third one so before we start with today's discussion i would like to take a moment and introduce all the amazing guests that we have today so please give me some time to introduce all the guests so starting with we have nawab bhattacharya who is the director of united sports club kalyani west bengal and the managing director of krishi bharti we have saji pavakaran executive committee member of asian football confederation and south asian football federation he is also the former general secretary of all india football federation we have ranjit bajaj director of mirarwa punjab fc owner of delhi fc former under 19 football player of indian national team and asian record holder we have anurabha choudhary he is a sports advisor company owner of arun food and the former chief operating officer of mumbai city fc we have neil banfield former first team assistant head coach of rangers fc first team coach of qpr fc and arsenal fc under his involvement with the first team at arsenal fc they won three fa cup titles between 2013 2016 and qualified for uefa champions league in 5 out of 6 seasons next we have elvis goes he is the owner and president of acc ifapt international academy and the former santosh trophy player of goa we have asasio santos he is the first team assistant head coach of nigeria national team and he is also the co-founder of coach id and now introducing to you the co-host of this discussion we have hans gupta he is a content creator with over 11000 followers on instagram and a part time coach and social media manager and myself as the co as the host and i don't have much to tell about myself i'm just hosting this discussion and that's it so with this now we would like to take the discussion forward hans please take us forward thank you so much sagil welcome everyone and thank you so much for the opportunity so the questions like the discussion will be all over around the development of indian football or the world football and i'll be asking some about your views what you guys think for the talent development and what are your views about the youth development of football so my first question is to neil banfield sir as you have worked along uh, alongside of arsene wenger and you know you have uh, coached uh, many uh, like bigger teams especially arsenal So, talking about the same, what you what is your approach when you get to hear about that Arsene Wenger visited India for the you know inauguration of AIF FIFA Academy uh, for the talent development schemes, and what is your approach towards the youth development of football? Like how you take this? What are your views on this? 
Firstly, I'd like to say hello to everyone. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see you. Um, thanks for inviting me on. Um, be really interesting to have the discussion with you guys and see how, how the football really is developing in India. We've got a wide look at it. Um, getting on to Arsene, I've spent a lot of time with Arsene. Um, and he's really involved and he's interested in football throughout the world uh, and developing the game how it should be. Uh, the my time at Arsenal was extremely, um, uh, it was a great experience for myself and you didn't stop learning um, with him. And I think that I've taken it on. We went to Rangers with Michael, had a, a good experience up in Scotland. Um, but on the other question, which was about youth development, that was right hands, yes. Youth yeah, development thanks. for me is a big part of what how I feel. I think youth development within any country, in any club, in any country, is one of the big pillars of success. You've got to have for a club or a country. You've got to have a good development program. Um, it takes time to develop. It takes time to get the proper structure in place. Um, but you must be developing your own players, no matter what you do. You must be. And the development of it is, as I said, it takes time. It's not. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and I think we've you've seen at Arsenal. I think I went to the game last week and we played um, Arsenal. I mean, Wolves played uh, uh, Arsenal played Luton, and we had Emil Smith Rowe, uh, Eddie Nikita, Reese Nelson, Saka. That was the last group that we formed together, and that was a structure that was put in place. I would say six years ago, uh, we sat down and we developed a structure and a process that we had. Or as many of the the best players together and the good coaches and individual programs, it's it's a real in depth uh, uh, procedure that you have to. But you have to have the actual technical program to go along with it, and then develop your coaches who develop through the system as well. So it's a big a big big part of how I've come through coaching and how I feel about coaching. All right, that's a good thing. So, uh, going from this, Sajid Prabhakar sir. I really would like to like I'm first of all so much like quite nervous as I'm asking some questions to you. So if I'm not wrong, you have written the book Back to the Roots, right? Yes. It was yeah, it was published in 2016 and which explains the definite need to grow grassroots level of football in India. If I'm not wrong, like right? like please correct me if I'll be sick. So my questions so my question to you is what like basically inspired you when you you know thought of writing this uh, book of grassroots level of football? You know, like why it is needed to develop. And uh, if I talk about today's scenario in 2024, what do you think and like what's your view, like as per the last performance of India team against Afghanistan and in the AFC? So, what do you think that that concern is still resolved or is still there in India? Oh, thank you, Hans, uh, for this wonderful question. And uh, thank you, thanking you all for having me uh, on your show today. And it's wonderful to meet. Uh, some of the gentlemen I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, the, it's it's a wonderful question. You know, see that uh, my book was all about the grassroots, uh, why it should be developed, uh, you know, why it should be developed, where it should be developed, and how it should be handled. Uh, it is not on Indian context, but uh, to the global context. Therefore, grassroots require to be developed everywhere, irrespective of the geography you are. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I can tell you whatever the scenario where there in uh, 2016 in India still prevails the same. So therefore, grass, grassroots is still weak, uh, still uh, not uh, optimally functional. Uh, there are a lot of uh, stakeholders not involved and there are a lot of gaps. Yeah, uh, But, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, some initiatives which are better than uh, what it was, but then holistically, uh, it is still weak. We always talk about, you know, a country of 1.4 billion, uh, but then how many of the children, uh, you know, playing football in an organized and structured manner, which is very important, who are guided, uh, who are motivated, who are encouraged, who get support, you know, and uh, then they really dream of a pathway where they can reach, yeah. Uh, like uh, some of the gentlemen here, uh, Nawab, Ranjit, um, you know, uh, Elvis and uh, many others who are, uh, you know, trying their own way to develop the grassroots, bring in uh, the talent. Uh, but then again, these are all isolated, uh, their own individual uh, initiatives, uh, which we must, uh, you know, uh, applaud them and thank them. But more important is it need to be, uh, you know, uh, designed. 
and that design unfortunately is still missing and the design can come from the one center and that is very important where to bring everyone together and to really uh, motivate uh, everyone to be part of grassroots because a grassroots is is you know something uh, like a blood uh, for football and if uh, if that is not uh, you know the arteries are blocked uh, you know you will soon have a heart attack and that is what we see you know we see heart attacks uh, you know where the result against uh, uh, afghanistan is again a uh, you know big heart attack yeah and i was there and i could not believe uh, that you know uh, a team uh, afghanistan uh, i know how they you know assembled their uh, 25 30 players uh, it is not their first 11 it might not be their second 11 and how the coach has spent their own money how the players have spent their own money you know what is the struggle they go through uh, they are uh, they are 100% more you know 100 times more struggle than india in many ways and uh, we should you know our fourth team should be beat afghanistan uh, that should be our level uh, but unfortunately we are still you know governance wise uh, very poor very weak uh, we are still you know uh, uh, like cannot put across a program uh, we cannot manage the coach we cannot manage the team and that is what it is yeah and the asian games should uh, kind of reflected uh, you know how weak we are you know uh, there is uh, the leadership uh, doesn't know uh, you know what the coach needs and uh, what the team should go for and how whether the international window allows our main team to go or not you know that is the uh, the weakness we have in the system and we are still you know in our primitive level of 50s yeah uh, not of football of 50s but the mindset of 50s that's the problem and uh, you know i've been uh, very fortunate to be part of every level and i know i can sh tell everyone with you know certain authority and certain responsibility uh, that we are our weakest part is governance uh, the leadership doesn't know you know uh, football uh, leadership doesn't understand football development and uh, the leadership uh, uh, doesn't even uh, uh, you know is fit enough to lead a you know a, a village club therefore to leading a, a country like india uh, you know is is a disaster and you know and so that is where we need to come up with uh, you know certain criteria who should be leading the football at what level and what qualification what background one should have yeah and we had a great hope uh, that you know first time a uh, player a uh, former player is becoming the president and i was uh, one of that uh, person who supported uh, that scheme of things but then it is very unfortunate that we are going to uh, one of the worst phases in indian football and uh, we have to experience a loss against uh, afghanistan people might say that you know uh, our tactics might not be uh, better on that day our players could not perform uh, the coach is responsible players are responsible no you know it is a system which is which has failed and therefore you know uh, everyone in the system owe an apology to the country of of 1.4 billion uh, who are passionately supporting football a uh, day in and day out and the people are really uh, you know uh, the, what is i can say is that they don't feel sorry about the result they still you know uh, uh, talking about things uh, nothing has happened uh, so that yeah, way you know, we we cannot we cannot be a uh, you know a country where the country is aspiring to be a 5 trillion economy uh, and uh, uh, football uh, the biggest sport in the world are led by people uh, and managed by people who doesn't have a 0% passion uh, for the game and that is the most unfortunate part and which is uh, you know if if as long as that doesn't change you know we will keep discussing uh, this for another 100 years and uh, that is what our experiences will be and you know maidan has been released and we need to see you know how in what struggle uh, they performed in 50s and 60s we we uh, you know at that time they didn't have even 1% of the resources what we have today 
yeah okay. and uh, that is where i was telling everyone today that you know we must see and get inspired and let's make our future brighter and we need to see you know the changes in every level of our system and i'm sure uh, you know all of you who are part of indian football uh, will agree with me uh, and uh, you know and i'm sure uh, the better days will come and we will be uh, top of uh, asia once again we will not be able to have that heart attack like what we are going through thank you yeah so all right before so, just a second yeah. hans so before yeah. we move on sir we talked about the governance let us talk about the coach what do you think about the coach in his approach towards the world cup qualifiers that we had or and do you think that there is a lack of accountability when it comes to the results that we have and the coach actually coming out and accepting what he has done in the world cup qualifiers see the coach uh, is just a, a part of a system yeah and uh, everything uh, and the coach is as good as his la last result uh, that's no doubt yeah and uh, the accountability lies in everywhere yeah uh, the result definitely is not as per expectation uh, but then we have to uh, really uh, deep dive into uh, the situation why you know uh, uh, in november we could beat kuwait yeah uh, we in uh, in uh, september uh october we could play fabulous football you know drawing against iraq uh, unluckily uh, we conceded those penalties so therefore the same coach same team what changed yeah so therefore you know we uh, if uh, many of uh, like ranjit uh, will agree with me you know how the management plays in, in running a club yeah you might have a coach uh, but then what is the management support you have to give to everyone what is the motivation that exists for players what is that the players were told that okay you achieve the qualification you will get, you will uh, you know you are encouraged to do this because uh, we will support you in this way therefore you know the result cannot be seen in just as isolation we need to see the entire circumstances the entire system what we are putting across see we have won back to back three titles and we were playing fabulous football which we haven't seen uh, from indian team for long so therefore there must be something what was working well the same coach yeah you don't change the dna of the coach you change you don't change dna of the players you uh, the same players same coach so therefore you know i think uh, you know we need to look into more beyond coach this result see we can bring arsen wenger or you know uh, anyone uh, can we uh, get you know something uh, you know uh, better no if the system remains the same if structure remains the same uh, if our uh, if our approach remains the same yeah i know like i can give you asian games example like you know igor Uh, wanted to resign uh, uh, he he didn't select the team yeah it was selected by somebody else so yeah. therefore we have to thank him for continuing mm. and respecting uh, india yeah and no coach would have uh, you know continued uh, uh, after asian games because it was an embarrassing situation you are putting uh, those uh, you know uh, sunil chetri and others into get reputational uh damage uh, and in front of everyone yeah and uh, this was a uh, that was a major mistake we have done we, that was never a plan that the main team will go to asian games and that is where we have kind of created crisis and that is where the team has ended up giving that kind of result on the pitch so therefore igor must be thanked uh, enough from indian because he he just respected uh, india uh, he doesn't wanted to you know uh, go out uh, in the middle of the asian games and uh, created a crisis and that that is where you know we we have faulted and that is uh, have left to this kind of result so therefore you know i have all the respect for igor yeah but then if the coach is not supported you know if you give a, a mercedes but then you are not uh, giving the right driver or uh, the petrol or uh, the right service 
you know it will not uh, run yeah so therefore uh, igor uh, cannot be blamed for that particular result it is a system it is a structure we should be taken the blame and that is where uh, the analytics must come yeah that is where the accountability must come that who is ultimately responsible for that embarrassment yeah we reaching to 121 from 99 yeah in a, in a short period of time that the question to be asked and that is where people who are at the helm of affairs must take responsibility yeah and if the coach uh, should be sacked then everyone uh, you know the 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 leadership must be going uh, must be going fast because they are uh, the responsible uh, accountable more than anybody else because you have created uh, you know a scenario uh, of embarrassment uh, uh, for india Uh, and that was the direct result of inefficiency misgovernance malgovernance and lack of support to the national team so who is responsible for the embarrassment i would like to start with this question to ranjit sir first of all thank you so much for having me on this panel again and um... It's always been very insightful today. We've got wonderful guests, especially um, great people from England who've been with us on Wenger. You know, as you know, is my great idol. Uh, and, and then yes, and thank you so much for being here because just you being here adds a lot to it. Uh, in fact, my, I met my pleasure. I, I, I met the the love professor in Mumbai and yeah. gave him a plan and what we were supposed to do. Shaji, thank you for saying so much because I never knew that. Uh, you know. the first thing you will start with is by saying that what's the problem is governance and in fact you were part of the governance and now you know that what we all keep on saying from outside when we call for sackings and we call for this you've said it you've hit the nail on the head there is no accountability there is no transparency so unless you have accountability and transparency in a system and again like you said it comes from basically the system now like you said again i'll agree with you that if we imagine if we got arsen menger here would we have won the asian games or maybe qualified in the third round of the world cup and maybe fourth round no we wouldn't have if we had get pep would we have no ancelotti no we wouldn't have so see again we are looking at it the wrong way we are looking for quick fix results that means yes saudi arabia may beat argentina and they might just beat them in the world cup argentina won the world cup in but you bet my life on it it will not happen for another 30 40 50 years that was once in a lifetime thing happened yes so you think india can pull off flukes like that yeah probably if you we play um, brazil 50 times i guarantee you there'll be a game we'll be able to draw with brazil because that's what football is or we beat them that's what football is but it's about consistency are you going to be able to see your country into the world cup every four years are you going to be getting into the afc quarter finals semi finals that means top 4 top 8 every four years and no you're not because do you under 23 do it no have you under 19 16 14 ever even qualified for the afc 16s no so you mean to say your juniors suck but somehow your seniors will get a magic pill and they'll start kicking everybody's ass no that doesn't happen we've got it the wrong way around the amount of money which is being spent on the seniors right now the salaries are comparable to the championship and i'm not kidding um so all our friends abroad will be um flabbergasted to hear that the indians here in the isl earn somewhere around 2 to 3 crore rupees the top ones the ones who are playing for the indian team and some are near up nearby some even 4 crores that's around half a million quid for a year and uh actual standards of those indians are if they play probably in the third division of european football somewhere getting 2 to 4000 dollars a month that is the standard if you talk about footballing standards so they are never going to get out of their comfort zone and go abroad how does by the way iran get there south korea get there 
uh, even Japan get there. Their top leagues are 10 times or 100 times better than our top league, the ISL. But their top players who play in their league in their, for their country, they don't play in their league. Japanese don't play, Iranians don't play, Koreans don't play. They play in Europe. They come back and when they come back, they already are great. So our women have a great chance of qualifying for the World Cup much before our men. And see, that's how the ranking works. Our women are in the top 50, 60. And that is why we've got six women playing in the Champions League and a girl scoring every single day in the Champions League. And if you've got seven, eight girls playing there, those girls, when they get back, they have a great chance. But Indians are going to be men, unfortunately, are very, very far off. Why? Because like Shaji said again, is there a structure? No. 1.4 billion is 1.4 billion if they actually play football. How many people actually play football Forget about playing. They want to play. In fact, I would say all 1.4 billion would want to play. How many of them do they ha have access to playing competitive or organized or structured football? I would say around 150 million out of 1.4 billion. And I would count the states of Kerala, Goa, Northeast, Punjab, Maharashtra, not Maharashtra, sorry, just Mumbai and just Kolkata. So that's where I add up all these places. The, another stat coming up that when you have this kind of a major country, you have a country called Capo Verde. I don't know if you've heard of it. Capo Verde is a small little island of Africa. And Shaji, you would be shocked to know they have a population of 256,000. And I was just looking up the rankings yesterday to find a country who I never heard of. And they are ranked 66th in the world. And we haven't even heard of them. And I'm sure at least all my Indian friends haven't heard of this country. So that's Come how on, far man. back we are. And it's because we don't have a structure. Now, what happens? The Indians keep wanting to get quick fix successes. And in football or in sports, there's nothing known as that. Like our learned mm -hmm. friend from England said, it's a long-term plan. And you have to have a plan in place. And not just a vision, which AIF have released. The vision has to be accountable and transparent. That means on the way back, you have to have tickable goals which can be achieved. So, for example, one of the goals of AIFF was that in 2027, the Indian under men's under 17 team and the girls under 17 team will qualify for the World Cup on merit. Merit. On merit. Yeah. Now, that's the goal. That's what your goal is. You have to tick it off. So, 2027. Are you just going to be just thrown into the World Cup or do you have to qualify for it? You have to qualify for it. So when does that qualification happen? That's basically the 2026 AFC Asian Cup under 16s. Okay. So for that, right now we are 2024. We are less than two years away. Do we have an under 14 team? No. Do we have an under 15 team? No. Do we, are we anywhere close to having that team or even knowing which boys are going to be part of it? No. So you really think things are going to change for the next 20 years? You, they are not. Why? And that's why I'm so devastated and sad because, again, after all these losses, people just don't seem to understand. Stop crying about the coach you've got to the senior team. We are never... Okay, I'm saying you are the best coach in the world. Still, you would have got this much further. But I'm talking about consistent performances every single year where we see India in the finals of every tournament we play. And that can only happen if your under-16s get into the finals or semi-finals and then your under-18s do it or 19s do it and the 23s do it and this progression. If they do that, those same under-16 boys can go probably play in the Japanese leagues or the Korean leagues and then progress. There's no way possible we'll be ever be able to do it unless and until we have 50% of our budget if we want to get there within 10 years I'm talking about. So people say, no, no, why Why not even 10 years? Because you are only looking at 121 countries. We are 122 right now. You're looking at 121 countries which are above you. Look at the 104 countries below you. They are working harder than you to get above you. So you don't have competition only there. You have competition below you. They'll kick your ass because they're working on their grassroots. And even countries like Kepawad who have a population of 256 or countries like Iceland who have a population of 300,000 which we have on a Mela in Diwali. Okay? 
are still going to get to do it because they have a structured thing and their kids play 70 80 games a year their seniors play 50 games a year and still our seniors play 20 games a year kids play 5 games a year so ranjit sir as you mentioned about the plan that you know we should have a plan so as we as we know that you and nabab sir have an exceptional great academies in india in kolkata and you have in punjab the minerva and the united football club so i would like to ask that what is your model and how you guys are you know working towards this project to develop indian football and how your project helps indian football can you just explain some about that see um, i'll go first or nabab da anybody I mean, I'll... okay so you, you always first ranjit you always first dada not Tell you. <laughs> thank you dada <laughs> love you um see whenever i see dada i gets a smile to my face because um unfortunately we are the only two people who spend out of our pocket and take loans from people to invest into kids then we look at each other and we laugh that what are we doing <laughs> okay so um what we did was uh, four years ago when i was in indian football already for four five years i knew that the future is not bright and i have no other way if i i can keep blaming the federation for the rest of my life i can keep blaming the government for the rest of my life what am i going to do about it so after winning every title there is to win under 13 15 16 18 senior futsal everything now we've changed our goals our goals was how many we judge our successes by how many internationals we produce for the country every single year every single year and has to be in in every age group and what they go and do on the international stage so it's not good enough for us for our international just getting the tick how many internationals does he play does mean is he consistent does he make his team there and what does he do for the international team wherever he's playing unless he's a difference maker and the match winner we don't we don't con- consider it success so our benchmark is now the world standard that is why we took it on ourselves that we are going to get india to the world cup or at least try or die trying <laughs> then we had this batch called the world cup batch 2034 we selected 120 boys from all over india um in 2019-20 and we gave them a scholarship worth 5 lakhs 100 of them 120 of them and that's where all the money of mine is going in but these boys have given me tremendous results that means we've gone and won three international tournaments one in dubai the, we won the gothia cup the first ever indian team to do that in the under 14 level so if now i my aim was that i should be able to do this now with the next batch that means the next 13s i produce and the next 13s are produced because they, that those can't be given international exposure by the country my aim was that by now the 14 15 because this vision was there there should be an indian under 15 team if there was an indian under 15 team the boys who deserved it from my batch would be in there they would go and make it now i'm watching that there is no under 15 team so i don't know what to do now do i take them again and again for exposure tours and take them abroad and if that's what i have to do i'll have to do it but end of the day it's not minerva playing the world cup it's india there has to be a governance and a system in place and um, hopefully like shaji says we'll wake up one day and they hope things get okay but i yeah. don't see a very bright future unless we change the way all of us think even the fans even the coaches mm-hmm. everybody grassroots Yes. Okay. So I just kind of missed it. You know, we went to the topic of your academy, but I would like to take you back to the governance. So let's be clear. And, you know, in the first discussion, when we had, you mentioned that AIFF is the servant of FSTL Reliance. Yeah. While, while we had the discussion about Hero ISL, while we had the discussion about governance of Hero ISL, while we had the discussion about promotion and relegation of ISL. And now we are seeing Mohammedan also getting promoted to ISL. Why do you say that AIFF is the servant of FSDL Reliance? Okay, so you have a marketing and commercial partner. That means that partner is supposed to be marketing and commercializing your sport, getting you the best deals possible and making the sport a presentable product. The moment the marketing and commercial partner has the right to also look after your national team, also have a person sitting in every committee, including your disciplinary committees and your other I-League committees and other committees, which they have nothing to do with, and they have a say in it, then 
when they get rights for donkey number of years, for example, they had rights from 2000 so and so to 25 for 50 crores a year. Now, in the same contract, they've written that from 25 to 2040, they can take it for 50 crores again. Now, the petrol cost in 2010 was 40 rupees and the petrol cost in 2040 will be 400 rupees. But the money they want to put into Indian football is the same. Now, what do they get? So, if suppose they were a marketing and commercial partner only, they would just make whatever profits they will get from ads. This partner will, whatever money Indian football makes, they get. I'll give you another example. This time, I-League opened up corporate um, and Shaji is here so you can confirm it. So they opened up this corporate ke entry. Karlo. So they have 5 crores, 3 crores and all. So the money was supposed to come in and help AIFF deal with things because they already lack of funds. And what did they do? So they got a letter from FSDL Reliance. That this money is not yours. This money is ours. Please give it to us. So AIFF had to give that money to them. And in fact, had to suffer a loss. Why? Because the number of teams increased in the I-League. The cost went up. The production quality, everything went down, but the money, even that little money went to FSDL, which they didn't put back into IV. So tomorrow when the ISL becomes big, all the money which comes in does not have to be put back into Indian football. Like the IPL, doesn't matter how much money they make. It's not only spent on T20 cricket, it's spent on test match, it's spent on district, it's spent on grassroots. The money has to go back into Indian cricket. But Indian football, no, that's not the reason. So the top, the my aim, my thing is that the federation has to do the federation's job. That means run the game, govern the game. You can't give the governance of the game and running the game to a third party. Because when I say, what do you mean by that? That means who decides the national team camps? Who decides that? For example, right now, Indonesia cared so much about the AFC under 23. They closed the senior Indonesian league for one month so that they're under 23. See, because clubs always have rights, like Shaji said, clubs have rights over their players. Mm -hmm. But if the league is closed, who has rights over the league? The federation. So the federation says, close the league, the clubs can't call the players. The federation couldn't tell ISL to close the league because we want to practice for the World Cup qualifiers. That's what happened here. Direct correlation with Indonesian football. Do you think they will, they will get ahead of us? Yeah, yeah. Indonesian football will be way ahead of us within five years. So will Vietnam, by the way. So will all these small South Asian countries because they've understood the right magic. And it's not about investing in your top league. It's investing one hundredth of that in your bottom league. So, unless and until, like we say, we have... I love what FSDL Reliance has done. It's brought glamour into the game. The standards of presentation, the TV standards, that means when you watch the game, it looks... When you watch the game, I'm not talking about the football. I'm talking about everything other than the football on the field looks like you're watching a Premier League match. The football, not so much. So everything else they've got. But that is the part which they're not supposed to touch. But they have control over the football part of them. For example, if the AFF tells them that do this, the CAO writes back to Shaji, the, whoever the general secretary is, I mean, and tells him, I hope you know you've written a contract and signed a contract with us. And it says you have nothing to do. We make all the decisions for you. So okay. they take all the so Shaji is here, he can confirm. All the decisions, end of the day, rest with them. There is no power, actual power in the hands of AIF other than functionary powers, which go do not go beyond a certain limit other than just organizing your junior leagues, for which AIFF has no money and they only depend on money from ISL, I mean FSDL. So yeah, Shaji, sir, is it true that like whatever no, the legislature is saying? Like, no, I Hans, just a second. Hans, just a second. Before yeah. you, we take on this question to Saji, sir. I would like to ask Arunava, sir. Being the chief operating officer of Mumbai City FC, which is a ISL club, what are your view? Like, you were the chief operating officer. So, what is your current view and what was your view while being the chief operating officer towards FHDL Reliance and its control over AIFF that Ranjit sir is talking about? Um. Yeah. Good afternoon from Germany to everyone. Uh, good to see a lot of uh, known faces. Um, I said something in 2014 to, to a meeting which was attended by Mrs. Ambani as well. I said, um, we can do a lot of marketing gimmicks. 
but as long as the quality on the field is not good, it will, the product will not work long term. That's our first problem. That, and again, I think what the ISL did in 2014, I was very lucky. I th still think the first season was the best season because the overall product was the best. You have to think in a city like Mumbai, during Diwali, the whole city was plastered, Ye Diwali, football Wali, and it was insane. I mean, forget cricket. I mean, even the, the IPL guys said, you know, we have not done this kind of a marketing. True. But the problem has been since year one is that the marketing spend in the ISL has dropped down to a minimum. The reality today is that after Hero decided last summer to end their relationship with the ISL slash with everything else, which is national team, I-League, um, the second division, the women's league, everything, it was over. The ISL now is running without actually a sponsor. The reality in Indian football is there is no sponsor who has come forward uh, over a certain number of years. There is a point that Ranjit has that that is the main role of FSDL. F what did FSDL say? Listen, we guarantee you 50 crores. If we earn more, you will get a percentage of whatever we earn yeah. more, whatever more financial revenue we can get yeah. into the system. Yeah. That not sadly happened. has not happened. And that is, that is, and it's not a football problem. We have to be honest when we talk about the Indian sporting context, that outside of cricket, whatever numbers are being shown, even with Kabaddi and whatever other sports, all the sports are suffering. Even Kabaddi's numbers don't add up. If you really go through the numbers that Kabaddi is trying to tell, listen, it is working. It is not working. Yeah, talk to the guys in the other leagues. So that's the first problem when we talk about the financial realities of where Indian football stands. That we have not been able to grow. The, the expenditure has grown. Why are the players so costly? Ranjit, you said uh, they are League One standard. I'll tell you the brutal reality of oh, where our footballers sorry. are today. I didn't, I didn't want to say. Bro, I, I didn't want to say that. I, know, I didn't want to say third, I'll be, division. Okay, I'll be more brutal. My hometown yeah. team, FC Remscheid, a former second-tier club here in Germany, plays sixth division now. No Indian national team player can play up for a sixth division team because ninety percent, because ninety percent of the boys who play for our team used to play under nineteen Bundesliga. Well said. Well one, said of our, one of one of one of one of our kids was wearing the number seven shirt for Portugal as a junior at the under seventeen level. Right. So reality. He's check, gone right? to university. So. So, so that's, I know the players ask me, I have tried to take Indian players abroad. The last player was five years ago, Changte. Viking Stavanger in Norway, an established club, um, offered him, a, for Norwegian standards, a very, very good contract. He got offered by Chennai at the time, five times the money. Reality. The player wanted to stay, but that the financial reality, you have to understand what background the player comes from. He has to earn the money as well. That's another reality. We have to understand mm -hmm. that a lot of our players come from lower strata of society and the money is ridiculous. Players do not want to go abroad because the money is good. Are they complacent? I feel, you know, there's a number of factors which come in together. And the, the reality is, is the idea which was there behind the ISL um, is still the right one, in my opinion, because they tried in 2012 and 2013 to talk about turning the I-League into something like an ISL. And especially the big clubs did not want to do what was needed at the time. Let's hmm. let's talk about those realities as well. It's not yep. it's not United Sports. It's yep. not Minerva. It's yep. it's yep. not the big clubs yep. around who, yeah, who, who, who were the off. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not only them. There are other clubs at the time in Mumbai and in, in yeah. Goa and whatever. Yeah. But but these are realities of Indian football. And Indian football is also what I always tell my friends around the world is: do not see Indian football as a country. See India more as a, as it's called a subcontinent. Look at it as a continent. What 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 Ranjit can do in Punjab, Nawabda cannot do in 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 Bengal. You know, it, the Northeast is an own set of things where I have to work. M Manipur is totally different than Mizoram. Goa is different than Kerala. Whatever. So these are all realities which exists in Indian football, which makes it very very complex. And um, a big problem is. If, if Shaji as a secretary will want to do something, he's dependent on the other stakeholders, right? Yep. And if the stakeholders don't work with you, this is our biggest problem. The stakeholders work against each other. They don't work together. Our biggest problem, in my opinion. And that is something, if you don't get these things rectified, starting off with FSL running the ISL, you have the AFF, you have the clubs play a very, very important part and very, very important role in this whole structure. The state associations, 
you cut it down, you break it down to the districts. Um, everyone has a role to play. And as long as that is not taken care of, um, we, we will not be able to create the structure to make Indian football successful. And that is, that is the, the core of, of the crux of the problem of everyone needs to come together. Otherwise, if I work against each other, we will not be successful in the long run. Yeah. So one more thing that I would like to mention, and we discussed this again in the first discussion where we talked about FSTL governance and everything. So when Hero ISL was started, the governing body of Hero ISL, FSTL, they promised that they will bring sponsors, they will bring money into the game like IPL. So they referred to IPL and they told that. And also there were promises of taking Indian football to the, you know, World Cup. But now we are saying that the sponsor Hero, which was there, that has also gone. So now who is responsible for bringing in the money or bringing in the sponsor? Or is it that the sponsor do not want to come because they won't, they will not make money. All the money is going to FSDL Reliance. Is it this or is there something else? What do you think, See, sir? No one, no one is earning money. The problem is everyone is spending money. Okay. The, the earning part is not possible. Your biggest problem in Indian football is so, as so long that, as there is no broadcasting money. I, again, yes. the broadcasting yes. money is the main driving force of football development around the world. The Premier League would not be anywhere and, near where it is. Aruna, sorry, the money not, only, the not only the Premier League. See, the money comes in for the Premier League, but it goes down to all the down divisions down. So, even Division 5, 6 will not be alive if the broadcast money of the Premier League is not there. Yeah. So, forget about our Premier Division clubs getting that money. No one gets that money unless it's put up. And see, I know the first year you put it up, you might even not even get 20 crores. But that's how it happens. You start increasing it by and by when you put it out for auction. And then if your product is good, then will people will buy it. So, when people yeah. say that, why are people not coming to Indian football? Because who the hell wants to watch Indian football? When you've got a world-class product like the Premier League or the Bundesliga right next to it in a channel which is more accessible to you than Indian football is because they don't even really show the matches. So, that's a, a different topic altogether. Mm. But uh, we've been able to market the IPL to a standard which is, I'm talking about, when I say marketing, I'm not talking about the spending Aruna was talking about. I'm saying how it looks like on TV. Very good product. But they've not been able to improve the football. If the football had also increased, I mean, improved the way the grounds and the commercialization around the sport has improved, which they have done very well, people would come in. People would sponsor the league. People would come in with the money. Now, why that has not happened is because none of them, none of these franchises were forced to, like in the Bundesliga, Bundesliga made Germany is the perfect model to follow. They knew they had a problem a few years ago. And they did something about it. They forced the clubs to make sure that each club has a beautiful academy, which is first looking at the future and then looking at itself. Because Germany did that, there will be no problem for Germany for the next decades to come because each academy of every Bundesliga club and the level one clubs are now producing players. And that's happening in every city. And they are catering to their own uh, areas immediately. So, unless we start doing that now, we won't even see results 10 years later. So, whenever we start talking about it, what's going to happen, you please understand nothing's going to happen before 10 years. I'm talking about India being world standard or Asian, st forget world, Asian standard. Or I'm talk when I say Asian standard, I mean top 10 of Asia. That's what I mean. 8 of Asia. Only after we spend 10 years of proper youth development and structure. And it doesn't matter. Even if you do it in one state, you'll get results. And that one state can get India to the World Cup. Because that's how big India is. You've done seen it with hockey. But unless we do that, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter how much money we spend on the ISL or the I-League or anything else. Okay. So, Ranjit, sir, you're, you're, just a second. Ranjit, sir, you're talking about spending. And Arunavasar is telling that nobody is making money. So, who is going to spend money on the youth development if there, no, if there is, is no one making key. money? Exactly. So, if ISL or FSDL Reliance had said, okay, fine, told the clubs that you have to make sure they did that. They actually tried that. They said, we'll give you two. They said, okay, you don't, you're not going to spend. 
FSDL Reliance will give you two crores a year as long as you can show it to us that you spent it. Two crores a year we will give you to each club to run its under 13, 15, 18. That means 20 crores a year just for their youth development. And they did not take it seriously. The rule should have been that in five years, at least two players of your starting 11 have to be from your own academy. But, but just one... Just, just one, one, one correction. For example, what we did at Mumbai City, for example, in the first year, there was a discussion: yeah. Do you put it into youth football or do you put it into grassroots? So there was a at Mumbai City, at least, there was a clear-cut decision in 2014 to say, "Listen, you have someone like Dinesh Nair with him. You build grassroots football in Mumbai mm -hmm. first, and then you know." And Mumbai City started its youth football around 2018, 2019, so that money was rather spent on grassroots create something and build something. Oh, but in a city like Mumbai, and the problem is in a city like Mumbai is you're competing with everything that there is, right? There is there is Bollywood, there is other sports. Again, getting from A to B is a problem. The the the, the point here is is um you 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 have to have some sort of metric to say, listen, what are you doing in grassroots? What are you doing in youth football? And there are certain clubs who have done their things. Let's say Bangalore have done certain yeah. things. Goa has done certain things. The Blasters now are showing that you know that they, they are bringing two really players. Good. So you know, and 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 again, and Reliance themselves with the Reliance uh, Foundation, yeah, youth foundation Young Champs program. So but they imagine, themselves actually have done it. They've done so it more than if, actually the clubs. Yeah, but imagine if yeah, exactly. So they had it right, but imagine if everybody did it. See what I'm saying is you don't require one Minerva, na? We require, like you said, we need everybody to get together. That's what I mean. We need everyone to be doing this because it's not only my duty or Nabab Das' duty, it's everyone's duty. Because as long as we all don't put our share in, it's not going to happen. And that's where FSDL is supposed to help us as well. That is where AIFF is supposed to help us and not reinvent the wheel. They need to help the academies who are already doing great work. The ones who are doing great work should be supported because they're doing great work because they are the ones who have no financial money coming in whatsoever. And the only reason they can be doing it is for development of football because there is nothing known as player compensation. You know what yeah, I mean by yeah, 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 So yeah. if we are doing it, there's no way I'll be able to send any player at the age of 18 for that much where I'll be even be able to recover the cost of that player. Because yeah, what I'm yeah. spending on every player is 5 lakhs. If I have him for 10 years, I spend 50 lakhs. There is no 18-year-old I can sell for 50 lakh rupees right now in Indian football. Okay, That's so true. that's where you have a big problem. And that's where we need help from the Federation and AIFF. So, so, hey, Sagil, I got to jump well, into this discussion. Just one I more. Just, about yeah, just, just, yeah, just, just, uh, just a small one more point to you know, discuss. Uh, Ranjit, sir, you are telling that AIFF is supposed to help us. And again, the money factor comes in. Last time you mentioned that AIFF does not have money. They only get money from whatever handouts they get from FSDL Reliance. So then yes. how do you, so that means AIFF see, will... No, 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 no. See, we are the only sport which only gets handouts from there. What about the government? Where, where is our government? Our government used to give us support of over 60 to 70 crore rupees till 10 years ago, 5 years ago. That was What has budget. happened now? They cut it down. When Praful Patel was here, they cut it down to 10 because he was not leaving. Then they did it five. He was not leaving. They made it zero. They said, we're not going to give you any money. Then he left. But then they were supposed to start giving it to us again. And then they forgot about it. And we really thought that with the new president coming in, he'll probably be able to pull some strings and get that money flowing in again. But unfortunately, do you know the sad reality? We are the lowest funded sport in Indian football. That means even sailing... And robotic gets more money than Indian football from the Indian government. And that's not Indian government's fault. Why? Because we, nobody makes a noise about it. So if you have the right connections, you go to the Indian government, them giving us 100 crore rupees a year, we'll still be the 30th ranked sport in the country or 25th yeah. ranked sport in the country in yeah, so getting you, money. So you're talking about government and. No, I'm talking about state governments doing their bit. Okay, okay. It okay. Be, so, Urissa. For Urissa is a perfect example. They didn't have to do what they are doing for football. Have you seen what they've done for hockey? I only say Urissa is the state government which is responsible for making India hockey world power again. It's one state yeah. government who's done that. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing it for football now. So imagine yeah. what I'm saying again, what Arunava says. This is, we are a subcontinent. 
imagine if one state can do this and it's not a rich state imagine if all the states start taking sport so seriously and cricket does not need to su support all the other sports seriously like odisha has done if five other states do it we'll be in top of the world bro we won't need anyone we don't even need yeah. the main government yeah so when you talk about the government even kalyan chobe is a politician so why can't he through his political connections reach out to the government because that is more easier than we actually creating a noise because we are no one closer to his, his hey, president my brother position. this this you should invite kalyan chobe onto the show and ask i just want to like okay moving on to elvis sir want to no 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 i l listen because i think i have akashi over here and myself and 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 i know i have an indian history in terms of i know where i have been as a football player been as a coach in indian football and what i hear is the same chatter every single time every discussion on every podcast everything we all know what's going wrong with indian football so elvis are you elvis are you happy that you have left india and gone there and not going to the same shit are you happy you know and that i won't oh, comment on that at this time <laughs> that's that way oh, for xyz reasons but i took a journey i mean long time ago i took a leap of faith and left indian football at the peak of my career and went to united states spent a lot of years educated myself and somehow landed in uh, in portugal because of my dad's connection to this country and it's a and this is something you really need to look at and i think akashio can throw some light on this subject this is a very poor country overall it's only 10 million people and the quality that it produces year after year is significant and nobody can deny it and there is a football ecosystem over here which is nowhere i mean at least at least i did not see it in united states even it's pay to play football even it's a franchise concept for business model it works for them because america is all about money and business and it has worked for them when it comes to india it's a different model when it comes to portugal it's a different model and if you look at what they are doing is amazing you could take a few ideas like i am a vice president of a local club over here atletico club de porto salvo we get a small subsidy from the camara municipal they have built our football uh, 11 football field and a football 7 field they have built it we are running it with a local organization that are elected members and we are accountable for it we keep talking about indian football and all its what is gone wrong and of course i have had a uh, just a brief discussion once uh, i met saji probably about 15 years ago at the fatorda stadium that's the only time i met him and 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 i have In 2007 I went to India with a complete package from United States Soccer Federation that said here is the YFO youth football organization this is the league system that should be incorporated in every state Adidas stepped into it and Adidas said we will sponsor you for the first few years implement this so the story goes back to the same thing it is we can discuss all you want fsdl reliance and all the crisis aiff is having what you have to address is the grassroots problem and the grassroots problem to me is at the state level the accountability and the government support has to be at the state level that's where the football can come if odisha can do it goa was once upon a time a jewel kerala karnataka when i say maharashtra mumbai punjab what happened kolkata was always up there because fa started almost 200 years ago literally they were in the 1800s and there were this origin of people of of portuguese origin and british origin and those were the guys the golden era of indian football we are talking about all this political crisis and all we can point a finger to everyone take a system neil is over here neil is in the discussion saying that they implemented a structure and a system create an infrastructure or a system and then take it to the all india football federation and then take it to the local association and say let's implement this because without that we will be here i mean of course we are we are catching up with years and akashio can throw some light on the subject for example how intricate the system is over here 
eight division from Petitesh, Benjamin, I mean, Tankinas, and so forth. He will know more about it than I have because I'm studying it for the last 12 years. The system of play, everything, and how they're developing an educated footballer. And you can look at those footballers on the football field and the coaches even, whether it is uh, Klopp or anyone, they say Portuguese football players are smart footballers. You look at Bruno Fernandes, how he goes from one end to another and how he plays. This is the quality of footballers we need to create in India. Now, I went as a footballer, I went to the United States and I failed miserably. Why? Because I didn't have the principles. All we knew, our coaches came from NIS. What was the education? Football education was missing completely. The fitness was missing absolutely. Nutrition was a disaster. A rice pile of rice with rasam, with no no protein at all. Come on, for heaven's sake! So we are in the twenty first century. We are in year twenty twenty four. Did I leave India for a good reason? No. At that time, I missed India. I missed Indian football very much. But what happened was. I had to do it because I had a dream. I thought I would go to the United States, learn something and come back. And I went there. I went there. I was there for six years. I coached as a professional coach and I saw and I wrote after article after article. And then they finally banned me. They put a gag order on me and did everything possible that they said, this guy should not be here. Let's get him out from here. Now, you know, I'm not going to point any fingers to anyone. When Saji said about the governance, what we are lacking in India is the governance. Absolutely disaster. 100% failure. No matter how you want to dice it and ice it, it doesn't work that way. And they need to change it. And they need to change it for good because at least in the next 15 years, it's not going to happen. If they make the changes today, in 15 years from today or 10 years from today, you're going to see some results. And by the way, rest of the world is moving at the speed of lightning, especially the sub countries. Yeah, you are not going to, you have to play a really a fast track program to make things happen. And I would say to you, reach out to the ISL teams, reach out to the I-League teams, implement those projects and, and give the funding to the states. Take it, decentralize it completely and you will see a difference. Okay. That's my take on it. Yeah, so before we continue more about Indian football, I would like to ask Asasio sir to give us a bit more insights about Portuguese football. So if you could tell us. Sir. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for, for the for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to share uh, the smart knowledge that I have and the experience that I have. I'm, I was very happy when I saw Elvis was in the in, uh, in the group of people to, to talk about football because we have uh, long talks about football and I see his passion. And I think the passion is, is is the main thing in all of us about this game. Of course, uh, we have here a person with a lot of experience in England, and uh, I'm pleased that a uh, person like like you, with your experience and work with so many talented players and so big clubs, we are still humble to be here with us and share your knowledge. And I understand that now after this experience in Nigeria, when you are with the top top players. Uh, we are all the same. It's not matter where you are. We are just Absolutely. With, uh, with passion. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. So that's why we are we are all here. About about the the the, the um, your question and and Elvis mentioned that of course because now he has the experience here in Portugal. Well, we are only ten millions, but we we really are in love with this game since 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 ever since the game was invented in England in UK so um i think i think what happened here in football was uh, in the 60s it was the government was supporting all the big teams and benfica most benfica and also sporting in porto but more benfica and sporting after that uh with also uh, players from africa who supported the benfica and the national team because it was ex colonies but it was the government. Um, after that, in the 80s and the 90s, we started to have the universities uh, introducing themselves in the clubs. And we had a person, Carlos Queiroz, uh, was the assistant manager of Manchester United and then uh, the head coach of Real Madrid. And at the time, before they, he moved to, to Manchester, 
He was uh, a, a football teacher in the university in Lisbon, and uh, he had a huge, huge uh, influence in the way that the Portuguese Federation organized their content. So he built up a program. And uh, starting in the grassroots, building uh, the first national big tournament under 15. So every state, by their uh, local association, uh, they were responsible to find the best players until 15 years old and uh, grab them, prepare them and bring them for one week in Portugal to for a big tournament. Uh, so that was the opportunity for the Portuguese Federation, for the national teams to see the best players and starting to invite them. After that, uh, we had this opportunity to see the local players. We opened the, the activities locally, like Elvis was saying. So every association was responsible to organize and develop the football in their region. Uh, of course, it was not difficult for us because this is a small country. I mean, uh, in the south of Portugal, in Algarve, and two hours and fifteen, I'm in Lisbon. So this is this is for you guys in India. This is this is even not the normal flight. Um, so it was very simple for us to connect, to create uh, football programs, to look to the players, to create uh, strategies. Also, we use the school, the schools. So we also have um, a strong, not strong, but a sports school program where after the classes, the, 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 the students can play uh, some modalities, uh, football, basket, handball, and some of them can play football. And they also have some tournaments around the country. Uh, but talking about the clubs, in the 20s, in the 20th century, when we organized in 2004 the uh, European tournament, uh, was a higher injection of money in the football associations, um, helping um, and also the Portuguese Federation to increase the, the number of um, courses, UEFA courses, UEFA A, UEFA B, UEFA C. And uh, last 10 years, every club to have a, a senior level, they have to respect levels of uh, of the evaluation so the portuguese federation build up like in uk they did it also and in germany the, the program in germany is also very very big they started to build uh, levels of uh, for the academies so if a club wants to be present in the national competitions they have to have a classification of uh, four stars three four stars to be present in the national competition. Of course, we are talking about strategies. Strategies of what? Of giving and sharing knowledge. And knowledge brings us responsibility. And when you talk about football, we talk about sharing knowledge. Okay, it's not about anything else. Sharing knowledge, sharing, uh, uh, interfering, having the the opportunity to educate people kids and this is the main thing football is a is a vehicle is an instrument to educate society uh if if, if this is clear everything could happen and we build up strategies so if you have the teacher and the teacher the coach is the main person it's not one more person for me it's the main person because besides the people who do the, the whatever you call the directors or whatever, you have to start educating the, the coaches, opening the coaching levels, the programs to educate the coaches because the other person will be with the players. And this is very important. So, of course, after that, you're starting to think about the strategy. How can we educate the coaches what kind of structure should have what kind of program we should have that's what Karskeros did to us Karskeros organized a huge program of contents of very clever and wise contents for that time and at that time not against what was happening at the time but <clears throat> the knowledge was not so easy as it is today so it's not difficult to create a structure that controlled the coaches Okay, 
this is the main thing for me. After that, and now, now how you can call the players? Of course, as you guys are saying, it's not difficult to call players to play football because football is 24, 24 7 in the TV. Everybody's watching football, even if they don't want to watch football. It's very difficult to find uh, tennis or basketball or handball because all the channels is, is football. So football is everywhere. So all the players want to play football. So how you, you, you teach football is the most important thing, okay, for me. After that, they will start complaining and the parents and everything about the conditions, the facilities, okay? And then we talk about money to okay. support all these strategies. So please, guys, if you want to raise the quality of your football, raise the quality of your coaches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Even I know we're speaking about sorry to cut across Portugal, fantastic, but even look at Croatia. Croatia, former Yugoslavia, and look at the size of Croatia. 3.5 million people. Look at the players they produce. Yeah. It's 100% correct. It's the coaches you've got to get, good coaches, who's going to teach it and have a good structure in place and then teach it properly, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, and the, if I could just quickly we add to Neil's... Yeah. Go ahead, Akasa. No, I'm just, just because I see a lot of people here, they are not coaches, they are, and the, the, uh, I love you guys, I'm not, nothing against you. <laughs> but I'm saying that don't be afraid of investing in the coaches. Yeah. Okay, because this is very important, because the main, the main, the, the mission of a club is to educate the players. Hmm. Okay, that's the main thing, nothing more. Right. Oh, so, Sagil, uh, just quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll add just a quick uh, reference. Yes, the, the, historically, where India was and Indian football was, and where Indian football is today, it has to be analyzed. So in order to give you a perspective, it's like the Britishers bought it in the 1800s and Kolkata IFA was established. And then the football spread in all the colonies, literally in Goa, Pondicherry, that is Cochin, all along the coast. And then somehow reached uh, Minerva, for that matter, Punjab, through the probably the Punjab, because I remember Punjab police was a threat to play. And JCT Mills Pagwara, those were the two Punjab grounds. So let me let me give a reference. What Akasio is saying is what I am seeing over here. And this is something, a philosophy which we are trying to promote in even in the United States. The coaching education, which is readily available to a Portuguese is not so readily available to an Indian. And the cost is co quite high for that matter. I wrote about the three goods, in other words. One good was the implement the coaching education in the physical uh, education program in the schools, for that matter. If you want to see a quality, because most of our parents, like I just spoke to another parent recently, and they're so much focused on education. They will, like, they will say, kid, stop playing football. You have exams coming up. Right. I mean, they do that all the time. So for me, I feel that implement that physical education policy as a football education policy and a football teaching methodology in the schools, because that's where the kids are spending great deal of time. Then take the other part and educate all your coaching. What Akasio is saying is implement a nationwide philosophy through the schools, whatever physical education, because if you look at uh, most of the top coaches, in Portugal, all have physical education background. They graduated from physical education, including Jose Mourinho. All of them come from that background. Even in our club, all of them are physical education co coaches, and then they go into football coaching. And the third and the final thing is, that goes right to the governance of what Saji was talking about, is establishing an organized football league. I am so amazed at how intrigued the system is. That is, a, I, I should have shared this chart with you. They have basically, uh, like, uh, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Petis, petites, uh, tranquines, Benjamin, infantis, iniciados, juvenis, juniors, seniors. Now they have divisions within those age groups. Those are from U7 all the way to seniors. And then you have four professional divisions, which is Liga 1, the Liga 2, Liga 3, and uh, uh, CNS, uh, uh, and then under 23 plays over there. 
if you look at that structure, India is not even remotely close to it. And I'm saying, even in a state of Goa, we used to have three divisions, which is falling apart completely. Now, people who are listening or who will listen to this say, no, 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 Goan system is great. No, it's collapsed completely. But I spoke to a gentleman in Mumbai and he said, there are more teams participating in the league in Mumbai than they can afford to have them. There is no room. There is no grounds available. There are more teams available to play football. So in the app, in, in, in all this, what we have, why are we lacking footballers, if that's the case? And why we are lacking is the quality of the education, which is imparted as a practical knowledge to the footballer, is not there. I, I went through that. Elvis, Elvis, I think there are two points. And Akashio yes. has, has said, Akashio has said, said it very, very correctly. It's the coaches, which is the key. Yeah. The end Between product. 100%. The, the, end, the end product of what the Indian national team today is performing is what was what these kids sort of kids what these players have learned in the last 10 15 20 years right and the reality is this is something this again i go back to that example of when the indian super league started that i feel today the indian national team quality wise with all the developments which have happened around the world in football it's all much more physical they look after nutrition they look after this but their football basics are bad. I go back to what Baichung said in 1999 when he went to Burley Football Club. He said, Neil Warnock taught me how to trap a ball. We still today have players in the Indian national team who do not know how to stop a football. Uh, I'll give you an We're example. Talking Aruna, very, very basic. Aruna, very, very basic. Under 19, so um, I got selected for the Indian team. And for the first time, someone in my I mean, I was a goalkeeper. For the first time in my life, someone taught me a W. That means they're supposed to get. And I was 18 years old. And this is, this is when we had Bijan Singh, Sangram Mukherjee and all those guys in our team. And you're having this guy who's just come in because of his freak performances, because of nothing to do with, because somebody taught him something. So this is not a problem here. That's why, see, Belgium did well because they made coaching education a revolution and made it so accessible and cheap that for 500 euros, you could be getting a B license. And that meant, like he just said, Elvis said, all PTIs in Belgium got a B license. So this entire golden generation of Kevin De Bryans and all these guys came up from learning the right basics in their school and then picking it up and going. So like Elvis says, the, the basics in the school are so wrong because the number of coaches here and at the level they are, are so, yes. unfortunately, so bad. Now, why? The number of coaches. Uh, Japan has more goalkeeping coaches than the total number of coaches India has pro A, B, C, D, E and goalkeeping. That's where we are. Yeah. So but, but, when we but, talk... But there's one point, just just, uh, uh, just one point to add to, to what Ranjit said. Um, out of own experience, what I felt, and I remember at the time, again in Maharashtra, WIFA were trying to trying to do, do coaches education. We, we have another problem. We, we, tend to go out in mass and forget the pyramid that we have to produce quality in the end. That's a big problem in India. So the question is, how can you create the funnel of getting as many kids as possible into that system and get the best of the best at the top? Because we are losing too many talented kids in the process. Huge problem there is in no, football. Uh, there is no progressive league system. Every league system, and then we are facing that same thing. We discussed this in United States at one point. The problem with USA is it's paid to play. If you have money, you can go start a league. And I'm going to say this right now in the public. Someone should start another league in India, a professional league. Period. I'm telling you, encounter with And who is going... Who is going to fund it? Sir? See, I the am moment telling you there are enough you now, multi-billionaires in India who can do it. But here is the point. But there is a gentleman here by like like Neil, for example. And I, I we should pose a question to him. And I would like to see uh, pose a question to him. What has happened? Because he was with Arsenal, and you see the quality of the players, and you can see that football school of Benfica, the amount. There is a player right now, Joao Neves, who is playing for Benfica. You yes. watch that kid play and you go, how did he come about? He's come through that system. And Neil can probably throw some light that 
where do they begin these players? Because there is a whole lot of things missing. And you can go to the subject of scouting and, and finding talent. But all the schools that are there throughout the world of football, in other words, are going through a systematic process. And we don't have one. We don't have it at the top, neither do we have it at the bottom, which Anurav said. There is no clear-cut proper competition and scouting to say that there could be a kid somewhere in Nagpur or could be somewhere in Gujarat who could be exceptional. How do we find him? Where is the system? I think, I think speaking about um, English development, I think we've taken a lot off the Portuguese uh, in that I think this country's always produced players, but we haven't been very successful as under 18s, under 21s, um, right through international level. And what's improved is the coaching to them groups. We've actually, um, the, they talk, oh, we've got this golden generation we've got at the moment and, and the midfield we've got. And then you say, well, we had Lampard and Scholes and Gerard. This country has always produced really, really good players. I think you can, you name them yourselves. But I think what has been improved is the actual coaches within the football association at junior level. Without a doubt, I've been on courses within the FA um, and we've looked at Steve Cooper and I've been with Steve Cooper and I've been with uh, Lee Carsley and I've been with... Um, um, there's a, a lot of the coaches that are at the junior levels are really are really up their game in the, in, the, in the intensity of what they're actually delivering to the players. It's more... The, te the, the technically have gone up. It's not just a, a, a group of lads that are getting together and they're going to play for their country. It's structured. It's a structured program that's been put uh, been put in place by the FA. And the thing that one of the things that has improved greatly in this country is the coaching within the football station to the junior teams. And I'll take it right down to the under 15s with the the, uh, the young teams. And that we've got some wonderful talent coming through in this country. And that's been implemented by the actual structure and the coaching that's gone in with the academies at low level. Even the, uh, the championship, if you look at Harry Maguire, he come from Brist he come from um, Sheffield United. Walker, Sheffield United. Uh, John Stones, he came from uh, Barnsley. So there's pl uh, in lower league clubs that, uh, and they're coming funneled through from grassroots. I think there's been a big sea change in the, in, in the British way of thinking and it is without a doubt to do with the quality of the coaching that you're implementing. And then you've got to have to have a structure to to um, to leap from into actually giving what you're actually delivering to your young players. Thank you. Yeah. It's for one and a half hours the discussion is going on. <clears throat> you have brought some legends, no doubt, from Europe, from Nigeria, and of course Indian legends. And Elvis, I, I follow him a lot. These days, I've, I've met him here only on your program, last program. I'm following a lot. We are discussing for last one and for one hour and 40 minutes, and we can keep discussing on for next 10 hours and 40 minutes. Indian football has so many problems. Everybody here is dreaming. New professional league, this has to be done, this has to be done, this has to do, governance has to be changed. Who will change the government? Who will change the governance? Governance, Kusal Das was getting a salary of 4 lakhs a month. Sorry, Saji, don't take it personally. Saji came here as a secretary. His salary became 12 lakhs per month. What India achieved? World Cup? Or what? Who, who, who? People in power, what they want? People in power, people are running football, what they want? Every state don't have a league. Every state have a board. Now I'm I'm listening for I'm, I'm now I'm both I'm listening that players are the Nigerian assistant coach was saying they uh, they take players from university they take players from youth kids our university first four group league matches first match from morning eight o'clock to ten o'clock you win the match you play the next match from on the same day four o'clock from two six o'clock. Afternoon. If you win, you play on the very next day, eight o'clock to ten. Then you play semi-final on on the afternoon of the same day, and probably two semi-finals if there is two semi-final or quarter-final. But you do only get a match, gap of a match, and another match would be around two to three hours, four hours. 
and we are discussing the development. This has to be done. This can be done. What Ranjit is doing, what Ranjit is doing, Paji, I respect him a lot. What he is doing is out of his passion. What I am doing is out of my passion. We should not have doing this. We should not have been doing this because the people who are running football, they don't want to, they, 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 they want to be in the chair. They want to take the power. They, they, they want to take the, the money. They, they, I'm, I'm not saying they don't have passion. Of course, they okay. have passion. I, I'm, I'm not criticizing everybody. I'm saying there was no grassroots. There was no such so development. Not that organized youth I leagues. I, I watched India playing with Poland, making two to draw. I watched India playing with uh, Argentina, was playing at his best. I watched India playing with Russia, making draws. I want, I, I have seen India playing with China, winning the matches. And now, now so much development is on. I'm saying the where why the kids will come to football. Why? There is no career in football. Why? What Elvis is saying, he has done the best, he has left India. I would be happy if Ranjit also leaves India. Go to other country and do with your passion. Something will come up. But these European people, these Nigerian people, they love football. They watch football. Today, my team and Tempo was playing. On live telecast, there was 34 people watching the match. And the players concerned, 21 players in my team, 21 play, players in the opponent team. If, uh, if uh, under eight people, four people who are watching, 20 are in Europe book, betting bookies. Wale hai. Wo, oh, wala oh, yes, 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 are, yes, are, yes. Hey, bol <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> I, was, I was actually telling that. So, as I had those 42 players and the referees, as nice man and the match organizers, this is the situation. This is the situation. I have played Dempo in 2012 with a packed gallery of 12,000. I was playing. Forget that. Santosh Trophy, Durant Cup, Delhi Ambedkar Stadium, 30,000 people. I have won Durant Cup in JCT in Ambedkar Stadium. Full gallery. Full gallery. Ten years, no interest of Indian people in football now. If I have got 500 rupees, I won't go and see a East Bengal Moonbagan match. I will go to the multiplex. I will have cinemas. I have so many options today. Product nahi hai, player nahi hai. Sab se bada baati interest nahi hai. Product kaha se aega? Player kaha se aega? Niche se player khelega? Let the players come, let the kids come. Kids don't come. Because there is no opportunity, career opportunity. What will I do as a footballer? If I play Minerva, how much I am going to get? If I play United, how much I am going to get? Uh, if you get some agents, then you go to ISL or some little quality players. Not much difference. From tomorrow, stop the foreigners. Stop all the foreigners. In ISL, I am sure the champion team won't beat Minerva. I am sure about this. Three matches, out of three matches, they cannot beat three times. This is the difference of Indian players. There is not a Basudev Mondol, there is not a Kishanu De, there is not a Sudip Chatterjee, there is not a uh, Parminder Singh, there is not a Kuljit Singh. Why should I go to the ground? To see whom? Main kisko dekhne jaunga? Ranjit Bhaiya has come, I go to Kalani, I meet him. My friend, you are good, I am good, fine. Yeah. Football finish. Yes. Football finish. Itna discussion, 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 discussion. End mein milega kya? Who will, what can he do? What can Ranjit do? Ranjit can take his team to Dubai. Ranjit can take his team to Moon. India mein kya hoga? Skill liye? Who cares? Who cares if they are good? Exactly. Now, uh, sir, said well. I, I, I would like to add one la uh, last thing uh, before here. Sagil, I think this is the way to end this. I think H1 gets a two-minute section where we say, what can we change? Or what could we do yeah, to make a difference? Planned. Because yeah, bottom line, I really feel that we have discussed this Ranjit over and over muted. again. We Elvis, have... it should start. It should this entire program should start with Nabab Dad's. Kya kya hoega? No words. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Paji, Paji, I give you the, I give no, the no, first opportunity. I am hearing for long. I see it's already ten forty-five. My my question is, 
first you do one thing you start recruiting all sports quota jobs india mein jitna bhi government jobs hota hai usme sports quota chalu kar do let the boys know that if i play football i can get a job so uh, like i would like to take uh, something from there like everyone uh, basically sari sir the question is from you you know from past two discussions we are just saying that ai if it is not doing anything and you also mentioned the gov- governance is not you know up to, up to date so we want to ask that whatever the like we can say it as a criticism or the allegations which we are you know putting on fsdl or uh, the allegations which are put by every indian legend over here that the fsdl is not working or the ai ff is stuck so uh, as you was on the top of the you know somewhere on ai if you were general you were general secretary over there so i want to know the, about the ground reality about the ai ff that where you guys were stuck what was the exact scenario over there that why you guys like as nawab sir said that you guys were on the power but nothing happened so we just want to know something at least a little or a brief uh, note about this that what was the ground reality at that time when you were there yeah thank you uh, again uh, you know a wonderful question and uh, ranjit uh, has also made some points see the uh, fault lies with the aff itself you know we cannot uh, blaming the partner uh who is external yeah and therefore it is up to us how how we deal with our partner and the partner is a subordinate uh, and that's the fact and uh, as long as i was dealing uh, i had a very cordial relationship with uh, fsdl and see the there was a lot of achievements uh, during that time and they have cooperated and we had a open dialogue and it is about you know having the openness transparency between the partnership that is very important and uh, like say ranjit i would correct you uh, that the money which uh, came through the direct entry of the i league teams uh, didn't go to uh, isl yeah it was kept with aff itself because that is where the negotiation uh, we had and uh, as per the Uh, contract there were you know something which it is due to them on a franchise sale and all but then we negotiated and uh, we kept the money but then i really don't know you know later part hey, Shaji, till the time till Shaji, the time i was there was, okay yeah, so this was the time, the time you were there this is the latest yeah. development letter has been sent and they have demanded the money so uh, that uh, that's a uh, news for me because see i have strongly negotiated this part because see the thing is that say like if you remember you know we have come out as say we will increase our commercial revenue to 500% and that was a very deliberate plan yeah and as long as i i was there i was trying to drive that where all the partners who are you know part of football uh, must get uh, the value out of it otherwise why you know somebody will invest into it for example yeah. shaji for that way when you we sold a club what happens is you devalue the clubs who are already there by the hard work by promotion so for example the yearly budget of the lowest club in india you know of i league is 5 crores going up to even 20 crores in the big teams so if you have a new team coming in straight at the top at 5 crores just to get to the i league they spent at least 2 years in now in three division two years in second division state league so it's taken them 10 crores just to get here then when you give somebody an opportunity to jump in at 30 lakhs like nandaris or 3 crores to some other team and 5 crores for the metros the club which has been devalued i sold my club for three times the value now and that time there was no promotion you know about it there was no promotion relegation now the value of the club should have been much higher because the club winner gets to the isl in fact the club valuation is 30% 40% 50% uh, to what it was then no absolutely right. right. see that is where the commercial value chain see the value chain determines Uh, the value of the product at each level whether they are the club whether they are the league whether they are the players whether they are the coaches yeah and the the problem is see uh, we have we haven't you know work we were not working towards creating commercial value chain yeah and a pro- football is not a sustainable product as we know uh, in india yeah you struggle everyone struggles yeah uh, and uh, and it is the range of uh, losses one you know underwrites uh, that is the fact but then it is our responsibility as a governing body to reach to that level where the where the football becomes sustainable product yeah and that can happen what you know there was a strategy being made inside how we will do it yeah but then 
you know uh, uh, it it is a it is a process it is a process driven and the change management uh, was being activated to reach there but then the problems are you know our capacity is low yeah our mindset is backward yeah and we we still think that you know uh, we have to work as uh, as uh, you know uh, charitable as possible in every level yeah the charity has limitation yeah the brand which will put money you know uh, they they are not doing charity they will do charity if they if they invest uh, under csr otherwise they are branding it they are marketing their products they are they are trying to reach out to their consumers they are trying to reach out to their target market so that is all you know we need to work together hand in hand and we must understand what other wants and that is where the missing part is in our system because everybody wants money yeah see about this uh, direct teams coming i can tell you you know people wanted them to give it free yeah they wanted to give it to free because uh, they think you know oh it is good you know they are a big organization they can add this you know let it give them free but then i was sitting you know my foot down i said no we have to have a system to get something out of uh, out of everything otherwise you know we are going to lose money and we have any anyhow, anyhow don't have that kind of money where you can raise from the market yeah no that's what i mean we should have even a higher price what i mean is that exactly, we have even a higher exactly. price not lower see the, yeah. this is see this is came all of a sudden and fsdl was right in saying certain things because you cannot say disturb the equation of your partner by doing something on a, all of a sudden yeah it is a plan which you have to discuss with them and come out with a, a, a you know solution and see there are a lot of things are legacy saji i have a hard question for you i yeah. have a hard question hard question is if you were in the position of the president at the moment for example would you have signed the fsdl deal the way it was structured i see see well, is, well, that well, is a good question senior. see it's a very good question yeah see like like i was fortunately part of that discussion when in uh, the deal with uh, uh, reliance yeah and and that time see the z uh, g was uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, not able to pay the retainership uh, money and and that time reliance came in and uh, they signed it but you know i see no deal should not be signed that way which is one sided absolutely not but i won't fault reliance there it is the fault of air okay yeah so you need to negotiate it right you need to see 10 years 15 years what is going to happen in the market what is the va value chain what is the market value of a certain product so therefore to blame reliance is absolutely pathetic mindset because yeah, yeah. see they are 100% it's not reliance it's not reliance we not blame no one's blaming reliance yeah. we are blaming the system and the system yeah. is supposed yeah. to happen That's See, and system basically was, mean yeah. meant aiff at that time yes yeah. it was aiff so kushal das praful patel in the entire party who allowed that to happen no that see now see the now you have inherited certain thing yeah. you have you can only correct it yeah. Yeah. i'm just and, saying at that time it, was, no one is blaming reliance anyone see if any any anyone would have been given that deal they would have jumped at it so it's not reliance is for no one forced aiff with a gun on their head to say yeah, that exactly yeah so no that i'm trying to no but, but 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 there is one there is one reality no, of the we can which needs to be spoken about right there's yeah, one know. reality if you want I to talk know. about it yeah, but no, let me finish right? the point of elvis sure, sure, sure. Know, uh, like what he asked see there is a, there, there is a enough room of, to negotiate and what i understand from my involvement till the time i was there uh, the negotiation process already started and it was a, a healthy give and take was going on yeah and uh, there was a timeline being made when you know all the discussion will happen how this will be structured how the possibilities of different structuring uh, and it was an understanding very clear that the current and uh, uh, deep current way it is it is not a win win for both the parties that was very clear yeah mm. so therefore uh, the discussion was already started But you know, then, you know, it was not a win-win. I don't know. Both the both the parties, I mean, it was not a win-win even for FSDL. 
ट्रांसपेरेंटलीपन वे एंड the discussion i rajit i tell you like say uh, you know there martin was there and his team was there and martin was really a pro- top professional i would say he was discussing everything open and i can call him i can write him he will reply no he but will... see it should yeah. have been the opposite way you should have forced them to look after the entire system you know why would you take away the grassroots pro- and the first division and the second division and women's football into your own purview And because and if see, whatever no, they've no, done with reliance Rajiv, if they Rajiv, do with everybody Rajiv, then it's a good thing do you know we got right backs all the national championships rights were given back futsal but, given back but, beach soccer yes, given but back but done, everything yes, we got but back what have we done so that's part of the negotiation but, but see i I, I, i can't really speak for af right now i know but i'm yeah. saying we got the rights back but for what yes. we killing now that so means that now is, it is an achievement no there was a some process being started So, but sadi the achievement is when we get the rights back and we do something with the rights if we get the rights back and we put them in our house then there is no achievement is no, as bad as absolutely you know that's a that's again a liability you are creating but again see the intention see yeah. intention you have to understand yes, yes. intention yes. yeah because we from 100% we got something back and why we should got why we got back you know it is an open discussion yeah and there is and that way we could have managed it and everybody understand in the system see there is not uh, everyone is making money out of it so that you know uh, it cannot be sustainable and that is where we were reaching definitely but then you know like uh, we all have to you know continue uh, and like indian football has yeah, a habit of shooting his yeah. every foot we shot ourselves in a foot again and now we are yeah. back to the same position with in fighting and again we have so, so, same. so just uh, yes. uh, sorry, one sorry, more and, and, and with my advice to paji for going abroad <laughs> don't yeah, stay yeah. in india with football okay uh, Sagi, okay Sagi, just 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 one minute just one minute just one minute. Da, da. Sorry, sir. I just want to like I know you cannot speak for AFF, so I just want to know your view about Vision twenty forty seven. Just a brief two minutes. Stole my question. About Vision. Achha, yeah, vision see the 20. very very important question. See the Vision twenty forty seven. It was a genuine, genuine because I have put you know more than uh, what you say. Uh, I don't know how many hours. Yeah, uh, to make it happen. because uh, that uh, announcement that uh, within 100 days we will come out uh, with a, a road map uh, which was not even i was aware yeah so that was the team we were working uh, unfortunately but then you know we pulled it uh, 100 days and yes. there were genuine efforts and every second week i used to sit on and had on 7th uh, january 2024 i was there i would have submitted a report openly transparently that what we have achieved what we could not achieve and where are the pain points are yeah so therefore uh, yeah as ranjit already mentioned that under 17 team qualification it was a genuinely you know calibratedly decided that we will qualify but then unfortunately see there are some people who are responsible to bring in some collaboration some uh, partnership uh, to kick start and arsen wenger was part of that design and within the very first day first week you know i initiated uh, the talent development scheme and uh, i had a big plan and had not, i been there i can tell you you know ranjit uh, would have got that plan uh, that how, what is the plan you know unfortunately you know uh, arsen wenger came and still uh, the odisha government supported it uh, but still that, uh, can you charge it please tell everyone you must tell everyone that you or arsen menger came fifa supported us they are already started the salaries of the coaches who are at odisha they are already being paid for the last so many months still there has been no scouting done odisha government has given you a beautiful world class facility everything is ready but for the last 4 months aiff has just not been able to use it because so that's not been able to send kids there 
बाकी कुछ नहीं होता है तेरे को पता है ना क्या दिमाग खाता है आपका एकदम इतना क्वेश्चन का आंसर नहीं होता है इंडियन फुटबॉल में लास्ट वन आई गॉट टू गो ऑल्सो हियर in in concluding saji do you see a future for indian football do you see a, a light at the end of the tunnel because you are yeah, in the see, helm of it i know see, you are always always see i have devoted my life uh, to football and you know the people like ranjit uh, nabab and others and you yourself and arunova uh, all have seen see we uh, i still believe in indian football potential and i live for it you know and definitely okay. whatever i can do from my end i will do so therefore you know i don't see you know uh, this situations prevailing uh, and india becoming a kind of a uh, like a uh, you know underperforming football country uh, definitely not you know changes will be there right people will be there right people will be coming and i am sure you know our pessimism must go because we yeah. we we have to be optimist we, if you are devoting to football then you know we we have to really critically analyze everything no doubt but then we have to see the optimal line yeah and the uh, and the uh, optimistic uh, part and the optimistic part is that you know india is determined india is destined uh, to achieve success in the field but you know that that can happen 15 years from now or 20 years from now but then you know i would definitely like to see in my lifetime Uh, uh to uh, see some success uh, that we can celebrate together and that yeah. is where i yeah. live, live and i know that is where my optimism is because you know we have lot of people who have who are sacrificing yeah Sorry. we can talk about money and salaries you know that we are not living in 60s and 50s you know and and if 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 people are earning their livelihood uh, on a on a transparent manner we must respect that yeah that is very important you know and because we have to feed our stomach we have to feed our family we have to see that you know because it is if somebody demanding some salary it is up to you whether you want to give it or not therefore if somebody is not you know doing theft yeah the we have to be run after those people and you know put them into bars behind bars those who have looted money of indian football yeah and they are the criminals they are yeah. the criminals you know we must we must take their name we must put them uh, you know go all out and you know take them out of football and they are the genuine genuine uh, bottleneck who talks who doesn't believe who doesn't trust uh, and who who are uh, there to you know maro money from football and those are the people you know we have to go after them you know yes. and 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 that is my you know i will do that Yeah. Uh, yeah. and so, and we have to expose all those yeah. you know who are making football look weaker poorer and uh, embarrassing yeah well good luck so, to you i wish yeah, you all the just, best just from day one i always supported you yeah. i was hoping yeah. that with the indian football with a with a guy who played football and with a guy like you india would be on the right path but i'm very very disappointed the okay. way it is ended but never mind yeah. good luck okay okay sir sir just just a, just a second just a second just a second before we be leave let's reconstruct the vision 2047 in next 15 minutes let's give 2 to 2 minutes to each to speak and you know put out a message for the federation because we know at the current situation they are not working properly so let's reconstruct a new vision nawab sir starting with you as you are going to leave us so please tell us what is your message towards the federation and what do you want them to do if there is there is i'm not talking about uh, with this vision 2047 2057 this is already lok sabha election uh, parliament election time so we give promises and we come back after 5 years again same like the political leaders so my 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 thing is first federation needs to organize its competitions what actually it's been so long what ranjit has said under 13 there is no under 13 india team there is no under 15 india team there is no under 17 india team and suddenly i see a under 20 india team with some players who has not got 
a 90 minutes match there are two three players who has not played a 90 minutes match for last three years and now i have i have seen him in the uh, under 20 india team so seven two. of them seven saath hai so saath hai कितना भी भीषण हम लोग बनाएंगे कितना भी फेडरेशन को बोलेंगे फर्स्ट दे नीड टू रन ऑन ए प्रॉपर वे ऑन ए प्रॉपर वे और इसको ये ना ना मैं कर सकता हूँ ना रंजीत कर सकता है we cannot do it we can only shout from outside but ranjit has done a lot oh, in the last election he has done a lot lot of fighting but honestly again the things remain same oh fifa secretary said one time fifa president said we are sleeping giant that president when permanently slept that president is not in fifa permanently slept in india is still a sleeping giant so i don't believe in vision 2047 i believe make a five years plan only a five years plan 10 years plan this is my plan and no foreign coach for senior team with a budget of 5 crores a year no binu hai binu george is there khali jamil is there sanjay singh is there make a indian coach in the top if you have to bring foreign coaches bring at the age of 30 bring at the age of 10 let them understand what football is let them start educating on football and then india team jo what ranjit has ranjit has got bar bar ranjit ka naam aata hai koi partiality nahi hai but aisa hai he has got the knowledge what he is saying is correct jitna paisa aap kharcha karte ho eagles team ke paas you can bring farguson nothing will change nothing will change let him go back home his cut money and commissions all has been paid There is no problem. Now let him go back home. अभी क्या करना है ना उसका पैसा से आप एक जो पंद्रह साल का टीम बनाओ and let him go. Let them go to Japan. Stay for a year. Stay for two years. Stay for three years. Train them there. The best twenty players from India should stay in Japan. Should stay in footballing countries where Absolutely. football is. Send them to Portugal. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a better prospect. That's also a better prospect. It's not that costly like Japan. Okay. Not that costly. Yeah, here, here, pe football, today, no one sees it. Even in my childhood days, East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, that means, man, 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 You just pull is Bengal, Mohan Bagan, Mohammad are out of ISL. I will see how many people follow ISL then. This is okay. the fact. Okay. So have good times. See the parliament election. Enjoy parliament election. We will meet together again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dada. Love Thank you always, Dada. Okay. Yeah. So moving on to Saji sir. Sir, now it's your time. Please. Give out a message to the federation, Shadi. Also, that if suppose now we know that we might just get, I don't know what happens in the court. We might just get a new election happening now. So, if you do come back, because it's going to be open elections, and yes, it's a good chance. If you do come back, Baba, what are the promises you make to the Indian public, football fans, and what are the changes you promise to bring? What is the difference we are going to see? What is the difference we are going to see? Ah, uh, Rajit, uh, you know uh, the first thing. If I ever come back, I will partner you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just not joking. No, but 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 Ranjit yeah. sir has already said that he is never ever going to be part of any federation or association. No, okay. So, see, he, he will I'll not say, be yes, partner. I'll I'll partner. see. I'll tell but, you if you tell me now that you are there and I have to just make sure doing this and you give me. responsibility of taking care of the youth but not as a ceo but me me sitting on the ground that is what i want to do work again so again my thing even if i ever come in it will only be 
because I want to take India forward and not as an official position ever in the federation. I have no interest whatsoever. You know that about me, never. Yeah, see, uh, see, because see, I have collaborated with Ranjit uh, all this uh, months and uh, you know uh, time I was in AFM that I am really because I trust uh, in his passion and the work he does. Uh, definitely, he can contribute uh, that. Uh, but then. Uh, the most important part is is not you know me coming or getting the position. The most important part is how you know we get uh, Indian football uh, to uh, to attract where the, there is belief, there is trust, uh, there is transparency, uh, there is going to be achievement, there is going to be progress, and there is people talking good about it. Not that you know today everybody is ready to you know put a uh, you know big uh, punch to AFF uh, and uh, the name uh, the perception everything has gone back. So therefore, what we need is not one guy nor two guy. You know we need uh, thousands uh, to come together and really see that those who are you know trying to loot the money from football. Uh, should never think of coming back to football. Yeah, that we have to make sure. Whether at every level, whether at the federation level, whether at the uh, at the uh, village level, wherever it's there. You know, because we, we can't afford uh, those kind of people who do, who doesn't have priority for football, uh, but they want position. Uh, that that we should never allow. And that is where you know we will be able to change. And the big thing is, see, uh, though it was 2047. But then every four-year plan was there, yeah. yeah, and it was internal plan. Every the four-year target was clearly mentioned. So therefore, what is required is you know we need to activate grassroots, we need to encourage youth, we need to you know sc scout talent in the way we never done, and we need to develop the talent uh, with the help of the club, and the club should take the lead. They need to be empowered. And we need to have the right competition at the every level. And we need to open up the coach education. Yeah, the coach education should be like, uh, you know, uh, Indira Gandhi Open University. Yeah, uh, where, where each and everyone can go and get their education. And we need many educators. And also, we need uh, the absolute transparency. Like every meeting should be live stream as Bajun Bhutia mentioned. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's so what that happens. No that's what see, happens in Uganda. Supreme Court, Supreme Court can yeah. do it. Yes, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. See, that is where every meeting should be live stream. Every meeting should be available to everyone, and that is a that is where you know uh, we have to, and and that is where you know all all those who are trying to bluff people, you know. Uh, by uh, by trying to grab the media attention, uh, all that will be minimized, and then we will be accountable 24 into 7. See, the accountability is very important. Yeah, what we speak, whether we mean it or not. Yeah, and that can only happen when everyone who is part of the decision making are heard. You know, because today there are people who are hiding uh, behind things. Uh, without uh, no responsibility, no accountability, but they are in the uh, in the seat, yeah. And that is where all change. And football is the most democratic sport in the world, and we need to uh, put that into practice in Indian football. And there are enough people, I'll tell you. See, there are enough people who are doing good, but they need encouragement, they need our support, and we need to handhold each other. And uh, you know, those five percent people who are bad. You know, must not even uh, in the dream should think of being part of football because they don't deserve. And if we can do that, you know, we, our football will grow and we will be in our golden days back, 50s and 60s. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sajid, sir. Moving on to Elvis, sir. Sir, you have your next five minutes. Please okay. give out a message. So let, uh, you know, First of all, I never got to say thank you for making me a part of this discussion. It's a, it's been a passion being a part of Indian football. In fact, uh, it was one of those part of my career as a young man or a or as a or as a human being, which I got paid to play, and I I have never forgotten about it. And that is something that resonates with me. So here is a, this is what I had written in my notes to, to share with you guys. 
basically I, I, I wrote a sort of like a four points that I want to briefly discuss. Point number one, plan A would be for us to establish a governing body that has a transparency and it's unbiased and has a better bylaws and articles of corporation. Because I went through the AIFF uh, articles and there are things that they need to amend it and need to change it. And, and I think there has to be a transparency in that governing body. And if Bai Ching Bhutia said every uh, meeting should be uh, live televised, so be it. I think that's number one for me. The second part would be the master plan that was created. I think it was too long. And I think it needs to be in increments like what Nawab said, five years, maybe five years and five years with specific implementations because implementation is policy and policy is implementation. And I think it should be executed in such a way that it shows outcomes at the end of every two years or three years to say that, okay, we have reached to this pinnacle point. So really a nice action plan has to be implemented and not just an action plan, which is broad, but it has to be, which brings me to, to the third point, which is address the youth development address the competition, but address the coaching education. So address this in a progressive manner because all the countries all over the world are doing it. And there is, there is not, in, there are enough examples and there is enough content or knowledge out there. And like, I'm an, I'm a prime example of it. I moved to Portugal and I started football academy. And today I'm collaborated with one of the oldest football academies in the Iberian region, Academica. And this is where which uh, Carlos Queiroz and uh, everyone created the curriculums which are spread throughout the country for that matter. And the third and the final, I mean, the final, fourth and the final point is to me is that I have seen that in Goa, we used to have a very structured competition. And in many states, it was the case. And I say that the same national competition has to be done because EIFF, if you go it, they have organized the zones. And there are five zones or six zones, if I'm not mistaken. And in that, like Goa and so those, those zones, that competition has to happen in the state and then zonal competition, just like anywhere else. And out of that has to come the scouting program where you elect unbiased with the third party that you bring in guys like us to say, hey, look on that field and in get me two of the best players. Because for the last 35 years, I've been selecting players. I selected a player that who's going to answer, sign a million dollar contract. We are looking, we, are, we have gone through the process as young men, understanding football and knowing what football is and what are we looking in the components of football, whether it's technical, tactical, physical, mental, and we have an idea how to find those. And those independent people without unbiased, without nepotism, if we can select those players, I think we will find the top quality players for U15, U16, U17, and so forth all the way, like we do here, over here. My message to all India Football Federation and, and, and even to the to the to all the stakeholders in Indian football is that bring that passion back. Once upon a time, we enjoyed it. It was amazing to play at the Cooperage Stadium against Mohan Bagan in the finals for that matter, with thousands of people watching and, and the electrifying atmosphere, it's there. I know it's there. I've seen it in pockets. And that's my message to the Indian stakeholders. Unfortunately, in Elvis, the youth Elvis, needs it. Elvis, unfortunately, there's no Cooperage anymore. I hope you know. They have given it out commercially. I, listen, I, I, have, I, I, hear, I read it in the group. I saw it. I did not want to comment about it. All I'm going to say is that's the story of Indian football is because in Goa, we build a fantastic, beautiful arena in, in right in uh, Bamboli, which was built for the Lusophonia games. And, and it, sad to say this, sad to say this, it is used for all other reasons than sports. And that is the sad dilemma, which I am unfortunately not part of anymore. I am, and by the way, Ranjit, if you have five crores, come on over here. In the second year, I will show you how to get a good re return on your money. And you will be running a professional club with that kind of money in Portugal. Okay? Basically, everyone is just telling me to leave the country, man. Everyone is <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, we need you, Ranjit. We need you. I want, to, I want to finish it on a positive note to say 
like Saji, I'm optimistic about Indian football. I was very optimistic when Saji and uh, Kalyan came to power. And I said, these are two individuals. I did not know the chemistry or whatnot or whatever, what the catalyst was and how that equation was uh, derived out of it and how did it break down. I would have loved to answer, ask him that, but not on a public uh, podium over here. But to me, I feel, felt that it is something that we need. We need a synergy of individuals like you guys who are there to bring it back. We are in the background, guys. There is enough information that is freely and readily available, including investors to come into small pockets. So my passion is there. I am there to support. Thank you so much, guys, for, for making okay. me a part of this discussion. You're welcome. You're welcome. So Ranjit, sir, I think you would like to take this next. Please go ahead. Um, I think, you know, we've said it and such a great discussion because end of the day, what starting from what Elvis has said, Nabrabda has said, Shraji has said, Arunava has said, and even our foreign coaches uh, from Arsenal and everybody else you're on the show said, uh, Casio was the name, yes? Yeah, so he said. Akashi. Yeah, and you know, the same, everyone is saying the same thing. It's not rocket science. Grassroots, grassroots, youth development, youth development, structure, 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 again, governance, governance, governance. So it's not that we don't know what's going wrong. So it's not, see, people saying, oh my God, Indian football is not going to survive. We don't know what to do. Yes, we do. We all know what to do. And we say it again and again in every bloody program. Every time we talk to it, this is how you do it. And not only me, everyone in this program and everyone in our country also knows what do we have to do to get it right. Unfortunately, still no one does. So instead of repeating what all the other guests have said at nausea, I can just say that football is the beautiful game. And it's the beautiful game because it's the easiest game to play in the world. In fact, what we to tell up my professional players, what I'm talking about, not even the kids, I'm talking about the senior teams, is play simple football. And that is the best football to play if you want to succeed. That instead of trying to make the through pass between five people, make sure that you make two meter pass right next to you. That's how you don't lose the ball. And you keep doing that. The same way, you need to make sure that our basics are taken care of before we start trying to buy a Ferrari. If we don't have a house to live in, we don't have food to eat, we should not try to drive a Ferrari. That's what we are trying to do when we are trying to look for results at the senior level, at the world level. So let's get a house in order build a strong foundation, put a proper roof on head, feed our stomachs, and then one day we might get Okay. Thank you so much, Ranjit, sir. And now we'll be concluding this with what Arunava, sir, has to say. So, sir, please take us forward. Well, I think we've been discussing now for more than two hours. Uh, I think a lot yeah. of points have been discussed and raised. Um, I think um, the we need to again if, if i stick to on the field and off the field it's the same thing we need to get the basics right and as long as the basics are not right um, you will you will not be able to do it um, things have been now tried in certain ways um you know realities have, have, have caught up with with us in indian football and and i think we also need to mention these realities i think that's a big big thing you know we of course with these discussions happening but but you know, when decision makers really sit together, these topics are not openly discussed. Everybody knows what the problems are. Yeah, um, I think that's the first chance. The second thing is, um, we've seen in in, in twenty thirteen, Rob Barn had done a, a roadmap for India, a Vision twenty twenty two, lovely plan, realistic approach from Rob. But at the time, you know, people within the FF said, you know what, we will not be able to implement it. So the the question for me is. Um, it's, is, is, is the leadership at the top is knowledge. I think knowledge of understanding what kind of a beast India is, understanding where to prioritize things, what needs to be done. I need to look at the whole pyramid and understand, yes, I have to do grassroots, but I also need to do youth development. And I also need to take care of the senior game because People will not wait for 15 or 20 years for us to develop a game. I mean, that's the reality. If you if you do grassroots properly now, your result in, in a country like India, it will take you 20 years to get the results. Right? It is not going to happen in 10. 
because there will be X number of stumbling blocks. And you need to recognize that there needs to be a, 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 a financial uh, infusion into Indian football in a big, big way. I don't know who's going to do it, but there needs to be that money coming in because that then can trickle down the pyramid um, because otherwise it will not grow to the level that we need to grow it. Because if as long, again, as long as the standard at the top is not good, more money doesn't come in at the top, that money doesn't go down to the bottom. A lot of people are going to try. There are, you know, in a positive way, I'll say crazy people like Ranjit who've done this for many, many years or will do this even for many, many years. But you need at the top people to understand, listen, and 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 look at the numbers in cricket. I mean, they're insane. You know, I mean, uh, you know, people talking about Mr. Goenka and Mohan Bagan and look at the numbers at Lucknow Super Giants and then you'll understand that what he's spending on Mohan Bagan is, is for him pocket money. You know, it's like fast taking out 50 rupees, 100 rupees. So we need to live in the real world and understand where are our problems and need to solve the problems one by one to get to the uh, 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 end game, which is to improve Indian football, to create careers for kids, but also take Indian football to a level where people around the world will respect us. At the moment, we are the laughing stock. Let's be honest about that. We have to be honest about that. After especially the Afghanistan game, where we played against players who don't even have clubs. They don't play club football. They are literally clubless, right? We have to address it. We have to address it and we have to ask this question. And we have to ask the question that, why are we at this level? That's, that's the tough one. And accountability is mentioned multiple times today. As long as people are not accountable for what has been done, I am fine. People can do mistakes. I even said it to a couple of players whom I've spoken after those Afghanistan games. I said, why don't you put out a post and say you're sorry for those performances? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. What will people... You know, people are scared of doing those kind of things. That's a basic for me. I mean, you know, these are things which I see is we need to do. Otherwise, we can meet in five years. In 10 years, we will have the same discussion. And I think this day for me is very, you know, the 10th of April is a big day for me because... My journey in Indian football started 26 years ago. With today, I started IndianFootball.com. Right? It was a fun project. Oh, I I, I remember a, a senior journalist out of Kolkata, who was a very good friend of mine, in 1999, said, uh, "I love your passion and your positivity about Indian football." But he said, "Listen, I have been covering Indian football already for 10 years. I've become a cynic." I sadly say to that person today when we speak, "Sadly, you have been right because a lot of things." Um, have not happened the way it could have happened or should have happened. And everyone here has tried to play their part in the development and the growth of Indian football. But again, if the whole ecosystem doesn't do it together, it will not happen. And that is my biggest concern, that individuals can fight their own battles. You saw someone like Nawabda. He is he's resigning to some extent to the realities that are there. Because he's done it, he's seen it. Right. And this is something which we cannot lose people on the way. We're losing, you know, a lot of fans said after that loss to Afghanistan, I will not watch, watch Indian football anymore. We're losing too many people on the way. That's another big problem. We need to get more people interested and to raise our voice and try and change things for good. Okay. So with that note, we come to the end of today's discussion. We have around six people in the discussion. Thank you so much, sir, for staying with us till the end. And thank you so much for all the messages that you have given. We hope to see the better in Indian football.